Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video of Civilization V. Today we're playing as Elizabeth on a Pangea map with a Chieftain difficulty, uh, trying to grind through the achievements. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a little bit of a beginner guide. Um, just explain some different elements and type of things. So right here you can see I started off with actually tradition. Uh, unlock your tradition first because it gives you plus four culture. Then two turns later I unlock the liberty. One of the quests asks you to unlock everything in the liberty tree. And since I'm always a tradition player, uh, I find tradition to be actually like super overpowered in the default game with DLCs. So I just go for that. And right here you can see I'm trying to battle my way through the barbarians. Since this is a chieftain difficulty, you get plus 60% bonus against barbarians. So I just pretty much was just going YOLO. Uh, and right there you see me pulling back, uh, trying to heal back up. Uh, the archers keep shooting at me. Uh, but uh, but I'm just like trying to get rid of that camp. The camp is the spot where I want my uh, settler to settle, actually, uh, because you're it's on a river next to a mountain, kind of like a dream spot. Uh, since it's uh, next to a mountain, it's eligible to be uh, building observatory, which gives you plus 50% science, which is actually a huge jump if you want to go for science victory. Uh, but in this case, we're not really going for science victory. Um, in this case, we're just more going towards a domination victory since it's a dual map and they suck and pretty much it's going to be a free win. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm just so far heading pretty much every single category. And also, I have the Natural Wonder uh, that gives you, I believe, six or eight faith. And I'm able to just get some... Uh, some easy religion, some easy faith flowing. Uh, you can see I went for the uh, the gem and pearl faith. Even though I don't have gems, pearls, they still give you a decent amount of faith. If I do the one with plus production, there isn't really much point. Just simply because uh, the fishing boat faith, uh, like, it, like I'm already good enough on production anyways. That little extra bit won't add up to a whole lot. I mean, it's a decent amount of early game, but the later the game goes on, uh, the less important it is. So, we're going to just keep uh, keep expanding and try to just work our way up the population, uh, increase our signs, and overall do that. As you can see, I'm just uh, wheeling around my archer and just comparing some different, uh, different elements in the Liberty Tree. Uh, of course, we gotta start sending some some ships to explore and find uh, find whoever that's there. And in this game, it was the Incas, which of course uh, we face pretty much no opposition. Where England with a great lighthouse, with the uh, the naval unit movement uh, tree also unlocked. So our tribbing um, was getting plus eight movement, uh, which is actually quite insane <laughs> to be uh to be honest and there's uh, the the incas at this point just stands no chance because we're so far ahead every single category especially the science and you can see i'm not really going for a lot of uh, uh a lot of uh other land based stuff because it's pretty much useless on this map so what i've been doing was going straight straight for all the ships like the galeas uh, the Caravel, which uh, is basically the, the power spike we're going to get, and that's when we're actually going to take over the Incas. And since this is, uh, this is dual map, as soon as we take over its capital, we pretty much win the game. So uh, right here, as you can just see, I'm uh, expanding my religion. Uh, actually, in this case, I went for the plus one go for every four followers. Then I did the pagodas. I did plus two faith for every uh, world wonder, and then lastly, religion spreads twenty percent faster. So pretty much the entire goal of our religion is to spread our religion and get as much money as we need because we're going to be maintaining a huge uh, army, and we don't want our uh, our goal to be dra draining. But luckily for us, with the liberty tree, we can hit that early golden age and also that. Gold range from the happiness, both of them combined, lasted for quite a while. 
and that gives us a huge head start. And you can see I'm just trying to uh, uh, move around my ships, trying to get them some experience early on. Uh, Incans, uh, they asked for some pearls. They initially asked, uh, they usually what they do is they give you five to six gold, uh, maybe with an embassy. But what, what you can do is essentially just ask for eight gold early game, then it of course decreases as the game goes on. But by doing that, you get some extra gold uh, early game, get some extra income. And to be fairly honest, it, whether you give them that or not, their happiness wouldn't really be affected too much. Um, in a larger map, they probably will bring the same deal to a different uh, different sieve. So you might as well just take it. And also, it doesn't hurt at this point. Everyone's trying to grow. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And right here you can see I'm starting to find the Incans. And I'm starting to uh, starting to just uh, queue up some basic infrastructure I need in my second city. Uh, delete the caravan actually because it came with a Petra and it didn't really go anywhere. So what I ended up doing is simply uh, selling that and purchasing another cargo ship. And I'm finally getting to the uh, Galeas and Caravel power spike right now. As you can see, I'm just trying to explore around and scout out the terrains and see how I'm going to invade him. Uh, do notice that the Goliaths cannot go into the deep water, but the Caravel, starting from the medieval age, can. So uh, that's why it's pretty important to know how to position your range units. Uh, when I started getting some Caravel, I'm just starting like to shoot random barbarians with it uh, to get some, uh, some XP. Uh, but right now, I'm over there I'm just trying to get my get my uh, tribunes back to base and heal up a little bit uh, they've been just going around killing random random ships and getting some easy XP later on we're gonna up, up, of course upgrade those units and get them going as far as the archer goes I'm gonna center center around and try to take out that barbarian camp for the sieves and then I took a, uh, a, tra tra a, tra a trading boat or cargo ship towards uh, I believe one of the maritime city states I think and I'm just trying to starting to get some city state allies of course for some easy faith and growth uh, but at this point uh, from every aspect from like army production gold food I'm just winning out every single category and I'm so far ahead in science at this point it's just a matter of time uh, to win the game, of course, I just kept going with the deal because, uh, like, there's there isn't really any point keeping the second copy. Uh, just give it to the guy. He pretty much already lost. And right here, as you can see, I'm just starting to uh, try to clear out some of the barbarians. Um, of course, I'm gonna return that worker because there's no use taking it, anyways. A Pangea map doesn't have that many useful improvements that you can build. I, I will say that I got pretty lucky with that uh, natural wonder simply because that natural wonder gave me so much extra faith early game um, to had started religion. I'm actually not sure if uh, if if the, uh, the Incans founded a religion by the end of the game. I wasn't really paying too much attention but at this point I'm getting almost every single world wonder and there's nothing you can do. And of course over here, uh, taking our range units, shooting at some barbarians for some free gold. Of course everyone likes free gold. And sending that uh, that great prophet down here too, uh, to spread some religion. Because simply because why not? He might as well do it. And thank god the barbarians can't embark or else I'll be having a lot of trouble dealing with barbarians, I guess. So right here for our ship wise. We're just going to constantly send over uh, ships. And as you can see, I'm at this point just encircling him. There isn't really a lot he can do now. Uh, considering he doesn't even have an army or even a navy. And of course, we're, we're just going to like, yeah, well, we mean no harm. But uh, in reality, we're going to about to butcher you in a, like a matter of like 15 turns or so. Uh, right here, I just, I decided to, you know, like go like, why not? Um... Just have some fun with this game and and uh, try to just fucking like one shot the city, but uh, it's 
it, it was really close to happening actually so over here what I did was I started the war with the uh, the melee units as you guys will see in a second uh, I started the war off with the melee attack which is something you always never want to do I didn't actually expect to hit destroy completely demolish the city in one turn that's why I moved up because I had three melee units and there are only two entrances for melees so I just say you know like why not since I already have all my melees positioned on one side uh, I might as well go for it but what was also really annoying was that right below the their capital they had a forest and a hill and I couldn't shoot through that and that was just very irritating and those guys I just like moved on because why not uh, and then by this turn we destroyed them and that is an easy victory. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time.